Hi there, I'm Tracy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I want to create a really pretty summer feminine outfit. I want it to be sort of aqua in color. I want it to be a little boho, a little legging look, and it's all going to be upcycled. And so I am going to make a pair of bloomers. Now, it is pretty easy in my thrift stores to find a pair of cotton pants or capris with an elastic waist. I prefer a drawstring. Those, these don't have a drawstring, so I'm going to have to do a little dart. Super simple. And these are really wide legged. Yours don't have to be so wide legged if you want to do this look. Now, there are no tags, but someone wrote with a marker XL inside the waistband. I'm pretty sure these are closer to like a 2X. They're going to be really oversized and comfy. So we're just going to add some lace and make bloomers out of these. And then we're going to dye everything. Now, Rit Dye, I've used Rit Dye for natural fabrics. I've probably dyed hundreds of things, but I always had to make sure they were cotton, silk, wool, and natural fabrics. I've never used dye more for synthetic fabrics, and I'm going to try it today or when it gets here. Here's a picture of it, but I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. So it's called Tropical Teal. That's the closest I could find to aqua. So I will be dyeing these when I get them done. And this is a top that I made. I have another tutorial on. I'll put a link in my description for this. This was just fun and simple from, I think it was pajamas to start with. And then I'm going to dye, try to dye these shoes. Okay, so it's all an experiment for me. And, oops, I dropped a shoe. Um, and you know what? Don't be afraid to experiment because I've made probably thousands of things and at one time or another, the very first time I made something was a complete experiment, every single thing. And if I didn't experiment, I wouldn't have been able to craft all these things over the years. So don't be afraid to experiment. This is an experiment. Um, worst case scenario, what? You mess up, whoop de doo right? I mean, as long as you don't spend a ton of money and you go to the thrift store and get something inexpensive, if it doesn't work out, save it for later or just save it and maybe you can use the parts on another upcycled project. Move on, don't let perfection um, paralyze you. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I tried these on and just made sure the waist was sitting where I would normally wear it and then I took a straight pin and just barely below the knee, I put a straight pin in there because I'm going to have to cut off a chunk of this and I want it cut just barely below the knee. Okay, so here's my straight pin and I measured from the bottom up to that straight pin and that is eight inches. So now I just have to go around the leg and cut eight inches off. On these, I'm not going to just cut it straight across the eight inches. I'm afraid it won't be super accurate just because these are so wide legged. And so what I did was I just cut up the side seam just because the side seam seems like a good place to start. And I lay my ruler down and here's my eight inch mark and I'm just going to start cutting. I'll move that over and I'll cut over to my eight inch mark. Now, you can mark this with something if you want, but this is just always seems to be the fastest and easiest way. And so I'll go all the way around each pant leg and cut off eight inches. Now what I want to do is replace that chunk that I cut off with lace. Now I cut off eight inches, right? And I want it to be about eight inches that I add because I like where it hit me because they are kind of a drop crotch and I like the length. So I'm going with the eight inches, but I will have to cut my strip eight and a half because of seam allowance. And so I have this pretty lace curtain. And what I like about it is both sides have a pretty scalloped edge. And so I will use one side for one leg and the other scalloped edge for the other leg. Now, 
The standard rule of thumb when you want to make a ruffle is take this measurement, the circumference of the leg. Now mine is 15 inches across, doubled is 30 inches. So the circumference is 30 inches around. And the rule of thumb is to double that. So that would be 60 inches, right? Well, I don't want these super roughly. And so, and I don't have enough of this. I have 53 inches, not 60, of usable space after I cut off that curtain rod tab there and the hem. I only have 53 inches, which is perfect because I don't want it super roughly. There have been times I put ruffles on things and tripled it. I want it super roughly, but these I don't. So I'll show you what I do. Okay, so now I have two strips cut. One here, one here. And mine are 53 inches wide and eight and a half tall. Now, typically if I have a really long piece of lace, I'll just sew it on as I go through the machine and just kind of pinch pleat it and go pinch pleat it. But since I have to use this sparingly and I want to get the small pleats evenly dispersed all the way around, I have to do this one a little bit different. So what I'm going to do to each strip that I have is put it together. Now on this piece of lace, it does not matter if it's right or wrong sides. They both pretty much look the same. So I'm not going to be super concerned. If you want to see the seam on the outside, which I mostly do, put wrong sides together and sew. If you don't want to see the seam, which you might still see it through the lace a little bit, put right sides together and sew the seam, whatever you want to do. So now I just have to sew these two pieces together. And I will take it to my machine and I will put it on my largest zigzag stitch and I will use aqua thread. I'll show it to you in a second because I'm going to dye this. And sometimes if you don't have 100% cotton thread, it won't dye. So I always match my thread to the color of dye that I'm using. And I'll just go to my machine and I'll use a zigzag stitch, aqua thread, and you know, I'll just line this up against my presser foot as I sew, just sew it together so that it's one big sort of circle to both of them. So can you see the aqua thread there? That's what it looks like. Okay, so now what I want to do is pin that lace to the bottom of each pant leg. And so how I do that, just so that we get our pleating equally distributed all the way around, this is what I do. So I'm going to have my seam on the outside of the pants. And I'm going to go to like the side seam of these cotton pants and I'm going to kind of line it up with this seam just so they're equal. Each pant leg has that seam at the same spot. Doesn't really matter, I guess. And I am going to overlap. So here's the bottom of my pant leg. I'm going to take this and overlap half an inch right there. And then I'm going to stick a pin. And then I am going to go to the other seam and I am going to stretch this lace out. It's doubled right now. And I'm going to find the opposite end where it's folded right there. And I am going to pin that on this seam overlap half an inch. And then now I'm just working on the front, but I'll be doing the same to the back as well. So now I'm going between this pin and this pin on the lace, I'm just going to eyeball this. I never measure this, this would take forever. So then I'm finding the center between this pin and this pin, which is about right here. And then find the center of your pant leg, which is about right here and then I'll pin that. 
I like to weave my pin in and out if I have enough space because a lot of times with lace, it'll slip through because of all the holes. Now, between this pin and this pin, I'll find the center of the lace, about there. Between this pin and this pin on the pants, I'll find the center and pin that. And then my gaps just keep getting smaller and smaller and more manageable. <laughs> okay. Now, between these two pins, find the center, find the center of the pants, pin it down. And I will do that all the way around. So this is what the other, I did the other pant leg already. That's what that looks like. Okay, I'll finish getting that pinned and I'll come back. Now it's time to sew. And the first thing I'm going to do is just remove this front plate. Just get that out of the way. And then I'm using aqua thread and a zigzag stitch. And so I like to start on inside seam because where you start and stop, it has a little extra thread. And I always like that to be as be hidden. It's not that big a deal, really. So I'm going to find inside seam of my pants. And I'm just going to slide the whole thing into my machine. And I'm going to set my presser foot down and sew. Okay, so I'll stick my needle in. Now, in between each pin, you're still going to have a little raised area of lace. So you just fold that down as you sew. Now, this has a little wider gap. So I will just take this kind of pinch it together and fold it over towards me. I usually go towards me or away from me. I try to keep everything going in the same direction. And I just sew over it till I get to the next one. And I just pinch that over and just try to make sure it's about half an inch onto the pants. And a zigzag stitch, I almost always use, this is a really gappy lace, you know, that just catches more fibers and makes it more durable. So I'll just go all the way, oops, I forgot a pin right here actually, or it fell out. So I'll just repin that. That's going to happen with lace, they fall out. Okay. Now I will just pinch it over. And I'll just keep doing that all the way around both pant legs. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Super cute. Goes really cute with this. And now I just want to add a little bit of decoration, a little bit more decoration. What I want to do is add a half circle of lace right above the ruffle here on both sides and on the back. Now, I'll have to do it a little different. I'll tell you, to make life easy for you, if you had a big round doily, cut it in half, or two big round doilies, one for the front, one for the back, and they can be different, cut them in half and sew them on. I don't have big round doilies at the moment, I'm out. So I'm going to have to improvise and do it a little bit different. What I have is this partial table runner and it's scalloped on both edges. And I am going to use this on the front of legs and do something a little different on the back. So I need to cut this in half, one side for the left leg and one for the right. And so I'm just putting my yardstick down it's 14 inches from the bottom of one scallop to the other. So I'm just going to mark seven inches. This is just so I can cut it in half evenly. Come down here, mark seven. Do that all the way down. And then I'm just going to cut it in half. Follow those little blue marks I made. Okay, so now I just have to create 
a curve. And what I'm going to do is just take a big bowl. Now I'm going to go right here and set my bowl down until it lines up here. No. Okay, so I'm going to set my bowl here and then push it up to the top of the lace right here. And then I'm just going to mark that. You can do it any way you want. If you have a compass or, you know, I don't know. You could trace around a laundry basket or some sort of lid. Okay. So here are my lines and I'm just going to cut that. And I want this sort of smooth right there. So it looks curved. Okay. Let's see how that looks on the pants. Okay. So I'll take this and see this has scalloped edges right here. I'm going to overlap this seam that we made on that ruffle with this scalloped edge. Now, I will wrap it around like that, and when I do it, you don't see much of a curve, right? So, I'm going to improvise here. You know, upcycling is a lot about impro improvising, engineering, a little art, <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. So I'm going to fold both those pieces in half, and I'm just going to sort of create my own curve. Like I tell you, a round doily would have been so much more simple. Okay, now let's see what that looks like. There, I like that a lot better. Okay, so now what I want to do is this zigzag stitch where I sewed the ruffle on, I'm just going to cover that with that scalloped edge. See, it becomes straight right here and scalloped here. I'm going to put the straight edge right over top of that zigzag stitch and let these just hang and I'll sew a straight line right across here and I'll sew the curved line up here. Okay. And I am just going to pin that on. You know, I'll just kind of line it up so that it looks even and I will pin it on and wrap it around the sides a little bit. And then I'll come back and, well, you know, I will just zigzag stitch it. So I'll just slide this in over my machine, zigzag stitch along here, around the back a little bit, and straight across the bottom. Now I have it all pinned, and I'm going to take it to my machine and sew. Now I have my aqua thread, a zigzag stitch, and I am just going to follow on the top that curve all the way around, and on the bottom, so straight along the bottom and I am just lining the side of my presser foot up with the edge of the lace. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Now see how those scallops overlap that other lace a little bit because I sewed straight across there. Now I'm going to work a little bit on the back. Okay, so now I have the pants turned over on the back. Now this time I do have a little doily and I'm going to just cut it in half. one for each side. And what I'm going to do is just center it, overlap that zigzag stitching right there. 
and pin it on. Now, I wished it went from end to end. I need to order some doilies because I'm kind of low on them. But you know what? I don't sweat that kind of stuff because nobody who looks at these is going to go, oh, I bet she wished it went from end to end. No, they're going to think this is completely the way I wanted it and totally intentional. So I'm just overlapping that zigzag stitch where we sewed this ruffle on, centering it, pin, pin all the way around, and sew it on exactly like we did the front. Zigzag all the way around, straight across the bottom. And I'll do that to both sides. Okay, so here's what they're looking like. And I just want mine to be simple, but at this point, you could add ruffles to it. You can add patches, you know, those cute, embroidered pieces of linen and things that you find at maybe an antique mall or something those make great patches and pockets so if you have a embroidered square of some sort fold over the top and just sew around the three sides for pockets you know lots of stuff you can do here but um, i need to take the waist in a little bit because there's no drawstring here and I talked in the beginning of the video about doing darts, but I'm gonna do something different. I'm just going to seam rip this open, dig in there, find that elastic, shorten it, and then sew it back shut. But I'll show you how I do that. So I turned my pants inside out, and this is the front. Here's the back. And I'm working on the front. Now mine has a seam right down the center of the front. So I'm going to use that to measure. I made a little mark here, two inches away from, or three inches away from that seam. Now I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. Now I'm just going to take my seam ripper and rip about an inch, straddling that little mark. That's just so I can pull the elastic out. Okay, this one is sewn in such a way that it's super easy to seam rip. Sometimes seam ripping can be a chore. So that gives me access to that elastic on the inside. Now I'm going to go over here and do the same thing, just seam rip a gap so I can pull that elastic through. Okay, so I seam rip that and pull the elastic through a little bit. Now I decided I want my waist four inches smaller than it was. So I am going to pull this elastic out. And so I'm going to divide that four inches between the two sides here. Now, so this side I want two inches, which is half of four. Now I'm going to stick a pin, not at, so this needs to be one inch folded over because there's one, two. So I need one inch folded over, but I'm gonna stick a pin as far back as I can. And then I'm going to mark one inch, which is about right here. See, here's the pin. It's just holding this back so it doesn't seep back into the waistband. And that's where I marked one inch. And I'll do the same to this side. Now I have both of these marked. I'm just going to go to my machine and I am going to stitch over that about three times just so it's durable on both sides. Okay, so now I have both of those sewn. I still have my pin in there. And I am just going to snip off the excess on both sides. Remove my pins. Get that tucked back inside the waistband. And now I'm just going to go back to my machine. This is where we seam ripped. I'm just going to pull that back over. 
and sew across that line. And then I'll have it back in place and it'll be four inches smaller. Okay, so here's what they're looking like. And they fit me now, yay. So what I wanna do is dye everything and we're going to do that up in the kitchen on the stove top because synthetic fabrics need to be very hot in order for dye to work. But I'll show you all of that and hopefully this will be fun. So I believe this is a polyester or poly blend ruffle on here and the ruffle on here possibly too. Um, I'm going to dye these shoes. Now, I'm not so concerned whether they're going to take the dye or not because these are just some old cruddy shoes and I don't really care. But my concern about these is I don't know how shoes are constructed. Maybe there's a lot of glue and that heat might melt the glue and they fall apart, but we're gonna find out. So this would be the time if you want, maybe you don't want to make this top. These are super simple. Maybe you wanna keep it simple. Um, you could do a cardigan. I have this here because if you get chilly, maybe you want a cardigan. Maybe you just want a summer flowy top. Now this has some fun details that would work with the pants. Maybe you have a pattern shirt with some white in it. Now this is beige and white. What would happen to that beige if you dye it this aqua color? I don't know. Sometimes that's the fun is seeing what, how it turns out. <laughs> um, another option is I just have a plain tank top here, but this could be like a lacy cami and then a men's button up where it open or tied in a knot, you know, you could dye a headband, you could dye a fabric purse, you know, the uh, options are limitless. So let's go upstairs and get this rolling. Okay, to get started, what I did was I covered my counter with plastic and then I laid a big cookie sheet here because when things are dyed, when they're done, I will lay them on the cookie sheet to transfer them to my sink. I have a spoon and tongs and some gloves. Now, I filled my pot up to here with water. The directions say three gallons of water and half a bottle of the dye more dye for every one pound of clothing. I'm just kind of winging it and filled it up to here. Now I need to bring this to, it says almost a boil, which I'm going to do simmering, 200 degrees or more. So while that's heating up, I need to take my bloomers and my top, it says to put in damp clothes. So I'm going to get them wet and wring them out really good. Okay, so this is starting to get bubbly and it says to put a tablespoon of liquid dish detergent. All I have is this foamy stuff, so, you know, just gonna wing that. Okay. Put a few pumps in there. And then I'm going to start with half the bottle of dye. The more dye you use, the richer the color is. And if you want a really rich, you might want two bottles. It just depends on the color. I'm going for a light, summery look. So I'm going to start with half a bottle because I don't want it super saturated. So shake it well because it tends to settle and get thick down at the bottom. And I'm going to, it says pour it in and stir. So I'm pouring in, oh, I got it drip. Get that before it ruins something. Okay, so I'm going to pour half a bottle in. And then I'm going to stir it up. Now it's bubbly, it's not quite simmering yet, so I'm just going to wait another couple minutes until I feel it simmering. Okay, I stuck a thermometer in there. It's not quite 200 degrees, but it's hot enough where I think I can test it. 
And I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel. Now, that gives you a good indication. Now that is darker than I wanted it. So I definitely don't want to add any more, but that's a pretty color too. We'll see what it does to the clothes. So at least I know it's dark enough. Okay, it got to a boil and then I turned it down so that it's at a simmer. And now I'm just going to add my items. And I think I will start with my shoes. <sighs> Cross your fingers. Okay. Now I have a wooden spoon here. I'm gonna have a nice blue spoon when I'm done. Okay. Now I'm going to add my top and my bloomers. And so it says to constantly stir for 30 minutes to an hour. <laughs> And I'm thinking by how dark this is, I'm not going to need near that long. Um, I did watch a video on this. It says the longer you leave it in there, the more darker and saturated it will get. So, I'll let you know how long. Um, I'm guessing not too long because I don't want this super dark. Maybe the shoes longer. Okay, so I took the shoes out because in between there, I can see they're falling apart and that, that is glue. So that didn't work, <laughs> but so I have these old grungy slippers that I don't wear. I'm almost embarrassed. They're kind of so worn out. Now these look like they're sewn to the sole. There's some stitching. I'm going to stick them in there and see what they do. Well, they turn right away. So maybe I won't leave them in very long, hoping the dye will take, but they won't fall apart. So it's been seven minutes. So maybe I'll take them out right away before they fall apart and see what happens when I rinse them. Okay, it's been about 18 minutes and this is getting darker and darker. <laughs> I don't want it any darker. So I'm gonna take a chance and just go ahead and take it out and I'm going to set it on my cookie sheet and I need to rinse this it says to start with warm water and then eventually cool. Now you rinse this until it, the water comes out clear, till no more dye is coming out of the clothes. And do it in a stainless steel sink. And if you don't have a stainless steel sink, I don't know, you guys always have great ideas. What do you think, maybe a bucket? or do it outside. I don't, I know everybody doesn't have a stainless steel sink. So, okay, now I'm going to take it to my sink and rinse it really good. Okay, I have it on warm water right now and then it says eventually cool. Now the shoes I just rinsed and I blotted them off with this old towel. I have a box of rags and towels and I set them out in the sun. Now these will be a little different than the shoes. The shoes may be a flop anyway, but this is what I'm concerned about. Okay, so I'll just put my garments in the sink. And I'll just rinse, rinse, rinse. It says until the water runs clear out of your clothes. So I have a feeling that's going to take me a while. But I'll work on this and I'll come back. Okay, so I have them all rinsed and I stuck them in a bucket just so that I can transport to my wash machine without dripping all over the place. 
Now I'm going to wash in my wash machine. It says uh, warm, soapy water, and then I'll probably use a delicate cycle. And then I'm going to dry mine in the dryer. You can line dry whatever you want to do. So I'm going to get that done and then come back and show you what it all looks like. Okay, this is what we have. Super cute. Now you know that old saying, never let them see you sweat. So I was a seller and maybe you upcycled to sell. Once I put this, these two pieces, on a cute mannequin with a pretty background. Nobody knows that I wanted this lighter in color. Nobody knows that I did some weird shoe experiments. Now these flip flops are holding up pretty good, surprise, surprisingly. I think the glue sort of when it cooled down, it re-adhered. So let's see, here are the slippers. They held up really good. I even put these in the dryer. Okay, so these are a lot of fun. You know, you guys get to see my behind the scenes. Um, over the years, there's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into my projects. So I'm just telling you that because if something's not working out for you or it's taking you a day and a half just to design what kind of purse you want to make or whatever, you know, don't sweat it because that is just part of the journey. If you did this easy breezy and just flew things, you know, some jewelry on a piece of fabric and it came out. No, it doesn't work like that. You, there's some sweat behind the scenes, so don't even worry about it. So I'll give you a little bit more of a close up here and thank you so much for watching.